first. Well, you got to go first. You got to go Joe Flacco. Back to Flacco. Uh, what, what he's able to do, especially in that first half, as you're watching him. Yes, I know he had to pick six. He fumbled. There were mistakes that happened in that game. But what Joe Flacco's doing, Kyle, you just showed that in the highlight towards the end of the second half where he's rolling to his left and hits Jerome Ford. But there were passes in this game. As you're watching, you're just like, uh. this is an absolute dime to Najoku. Najoku catching a one hand, one going across the middle. It just was unbelievable to watch him continue to play at this high of a level week in and week out. You're looking at it, you're like, all right, it's a short week, a Thursday game for Joe Flacco, who's 38 years old. Is he going to be able to get up and be Yes. He was out there and he was absolutely performing. All over Twitter, you just continue to see the Vince McMahon meme. And it's the kid asking his dad, what was Joe Flacco like on the oh, Browns? Yeah. And he's just, he's just giving him the, <laughs> with the face. And that's what he's that's been. Funny. And it's been so fun to watch. And even last night as you watch the game, as he's throwing the ball over the field, what I was most impressed with was the emotion from Joe Flacco. He's on the sideline screaming with Deshaun Watson. He's fist pumping after big plays. He's rallying guys. Ronnie Hickman gets the pick six. He's ch shouting on the side line going absolutely mm -hmm. nuts and it reminds you that at 38 years old as a guy that's played this game you're sitting at home you're not playing and you're still itching to get back out there when you get your opportunity there's not one moment one day that's taken for granted and you see that in Joe Flacco's play and this was awesome to me just watching the guy celebrate they've clinched the playoffs the fans are there we all know the history of the Cleveland Browns what the fans have been through all this that and the third but I think this season has been so special for them because they've been counted out by everybody with all of the injuries and here they are at the end of the season 11 and 5 clinching a playoff berth and it is absolutely exciting as hell in Cleveland right now because of what they're doing, not only on the defensive side with Miles Garrett, but also on the offense with Joe Flacco and company. Down their top two offensive tackles, they essentially lose their top two wide receivers. Yep. Amari didn't play. He tried to work out before the game, couldn't go. And then Elijah Moore, hopefully he's okay. He got carted off. Down their starting running back in Chubb mm -hmm. um, and down to their fourth quarterback in Joe Flacco, and they're like the best team in football. Like, mm -hmm. what? Like, I'm trying to think of a playoff what? team that's had four quarterbacks start in a season before. I, I, we have to maybe the Houston that. Texans when like Schaub and Leinert and all those guys. Garcia were all there. I think, and, I think they're the first one. All right, I got three, four, four, four is a lot. Four is so many. And, you know, he threw for 296 yards. The first it's the most he's ever thrown four and a half in his career. Hmm. It's, it's outlandish. It's 96. <laughs> and this is after a week of us crowning him. And he's yeah. like, all right, let me go out there and right. throw for the most yards ever. There was a stat that I saw that um, if he had thrown for more yards in the second half, like they took off, they called off the dogs after yeah. that. If he had thrown for more, like it would be the most yards thrown in a four-game span since Peyton Manning did it in 2013. Like, <laughs> that's Manning. what he's doing. And then there's that's this amazing. part of it where like he's 38. Like you look, he looks good. Like he looks yeah. thin. He looks. Interesting. He's like glowing. He looks great. Really healthy. And then the pass that you referenced to Ford. Can we show this? Like he gets smacked in the head. <laughs> Watch this whole play. Yeah, he takes a shot. He right gets shot in the here. head by. And he like takes oh. it. Then he. He's on the move of Quinn Williams chasing that across his body, throws it. Like, that's not just a big statue in the back and just throw an 80 yard pass. That is a nimble, lean, fighting machine right there. <laughs> Look at this. Whacked in the face, like yeah. legit. All right, damn. And then he just kind of scrambles. He's like, are we going to run? He's not going to outrun Quinn Williams. He's too smart for that. He's 38 years old. Yeah. He knows. But he finds the guy, they score a touchdown on this play. Uh, the quarterback plays exquisite. We can talk about the team all we want, we will. We've got several weeks. We might be talking to them late in January huh? in this story. Um, but I think Flacco's the story of the, the day, maybe the story of the season. Well, we have such a tight research staff here. We have it in real time. The 2015 Texans okay. made the playoffs with four starting quarterbacks, Brian Hoyer, Ryan Mallett, TJ Yates, and Brandon Whedon. Those, that's wow. the last team that's done it. So Whedon started wow. the game, too. The Texans have done it. But they didn't do this formula of the no. old guy no. coming off from retirement and everything. You, you raised the question yesterday, Peter, like, could he win comeback player of the year? I think if they, they're, they're going to the playoffs, especially yeah. if you win this to finish out, I think he is. You're in a philosophical debate with DeMar Hamlin and everything he's yeah. accomplished. Which Baker seems Mayfield different. and Flacco are the two we came up with yesterday. It's pretty good. I yeah. mean, Baker's tough to beat if you go start to finish like that. I, I've been watching Flacco now like we all have. It's like he, I feel like he's never played this well with the Ravens. Like you had the playoff run, but mm -hmm. that was a lot of defense and a lot of running. Like he wasn't doing 296 in the first half. Understand, I, I mentioned this in the highlight. The Jets have not given up 280 in a game all season. Mm. And remember, they've played Dak, Josh Allen twice, Tua twice, Mahomes, yeah. Jalen Hurts. Like they played the big dogs and nobody's hit 280. He hit 296 at halftime. But we're all trying to characterize Flacco right now. And I think I finally reached how I feel when I watch him. 
he shows up to the stadium like an old golfer shows up to the course. Okay. His body language, his calm, his confidence. He runs in at 729. Um, he rents clubs. He doesn't have a tee time. He doesn't go to the range. He jumps in with a group of three that needs a fourth. Hey, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Joe. He puts that ball down on that first tee and blasts it 315 yards. He is so confident, so loose. He plays the game like... He's got a, you know, in his golf cart, he's got a Yeti of Tito's with just a little lemonade. He's already, you know what? He's already a made man. He's fine because, you know, you come to find out as you're playing your 18 holes, like, yeah, back in the day, I used to play a little bit. Oh, really? Tell us about eh, It's no big deal. I it's just, you know, I won the, the championship. It's in, and, you know, it's like he's not totally chill the whole time. He gets excited when he makes a big shot and he gets a little mad when he misses a shot. But there's a famous golf quote that I really attribute to Flacco right now. And it's Bobby Jones, who basically invented the Masters and Augusta and all that. And he said, you swing your best when you have the fewest things to think about. Look at some of the guys we've seen this year. Look at look at young Bryce Young. It looks like he's getting over the golf ball. He's, my hands, my feet, my shoulder, my head, my shot. I remember Justin Fields earlier this year was talking about, I have too many things in my head. And he was being overcoached. Flacco is so loose. He's like, I got nothing to prove. I'm Joe Flacco, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this team to the playoffs, and if I don't, fine. But I have never seen, like, even, even Brady in the middle of championship runs, and all these greats, they're, they're wound pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Flacco's so loose, it's almost, you know, it's like a little anesthetized, you know what I'm saying? Like, he comes, he's like, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, I had one before the game, I feel great, I'm gonna throw it here, I'm gonna throw it here. He's got this vibe of, like, the chillest golfer on the course who knows how to play the game, he's gonna play with some kids, and maybe he'll make par, maybe he won't, but if he does, <laughs> great, if not, fine. It's really cool, and I really identify with it, just being on courses, never being that guy, but you see that guy, you always wanna play with that guy, and I feel like that's how the Browns feel. And if you are one of those three that he dropped into your group, you go up to the beer cart at the turn and you're like that guy already got your round it's like, yeah. oh, see? he's so cool he's, he like already cool did it in advance like i didn't even see him go over there how did yeah. he pull that off that was so ridiculous cool. we love that guy uh he tried to attribute all of his success like joe flacco normally does to his teammates you know mm -hmm. like gotta push the ball up the field i love throwing to these guys kevin stefanski's calling a great game for him offensively stefanski now only the second Cleveland Browns coach to have multiple 10-win seasons oh. behind Paul Brown, which Let's is go. crazy, which is another campaign oh. that maybe we should talk about in terms of coach of the year for yeah. Kevin Stefanski. Brown's fourth straight win last night as we take a look at how Cleveland compares to another hot team in the AFC, and that is the second come running team, or maybe the OG in the month of December, if you will, and that is the Buffalo Bills. Here is how they have fared since week 14. Um, they are scoring at a comfortable clip. They are holding teams. Their defense has stepped up. And there is a vibe about the Bills that you kind of anticipated seeing because it's the Bills and it's Josh Allen. Maybe what everything Cleveland has gone through, you didn't anticipate this. So scarier surge for a contender at this point. Is it the Browns, Jason, or is it the Josh Allen Bills? I'm going to stick right with the Cleveland Browns on this one. And I think obviously with the Bills and with Josh Allen, there's so much unknown. You don't know kind of which team you're going to get. We watched him beat down on the Dallas Cowboys, and that was running the hell out of the ball. We've seen Josh Allen go absolutely off. But with this Cleveland Browns team, I think – the resiliency of this team, of everything they've gone through, they continue to just show up. And I think for a team, when you're going against somebody like the Cleveland Browns, you know no matter how big of a haymaker we throw in the first quarter, the fourth quarter, whenever it happens, that they're still going to be there and they're still going to be fighting. So right now, I'm rolling with the mm. Cleveland Browns. It's good. If you look at those two logos, Browns and Bills, for the entire 2000s, no. those were two of the worst franchises Terrible. in football. Like you, You'd put that on a Thursday night game and there would be you know, six, six people watching and they were from Cleveland and Buffalo. Now that the two hottest teams in football. It's kind of cool. Um, and I'm wearing a Bucks jersey. They've won four straight. So we're talking about three teams yeah. that are not historically, you know, in the last 20 years been those hot teams. Uh, I'm going to go to Buffalo. And hear me out. I love what Cleveland's doing, obviously. And I love Flacco. I feel like this particular Buffalo team has been through so much and has hit the valley, like almost the nadir this season. And it's they've made it through the other side. And there's like a light at the end of the tunnel that they might be playing with a little bit of house money here. They didn't, you know, a month ago, we never thought in a million years that the Bills would be contenders to not only make the playoffs, but to, to actually win the AFC East. If the Dolphins lose this week to the Ravens and lose to the Bills, and the Bills went out, the Bills will have swept the Dolphins and they'll be the two seed in the playoffs. So like, to me, this Bills team, we all thought they were Super Bowl contenders. They laid an egg for the first 13 weeks of the season. And here we are going into week 17 and it's suddenly, oh wait, they are Super Bowl contenders. 
They've been through so much as a unit. They've been through the playoff games. They've won huge playoff games. They've lost mm-hmm. huge playoff games. They've been through controversy. They've been through tragedy. They've, this unit to me, if they get another two wins and end the regular season as that hot team, mm-hmm. it's like all bets are off. They might be your Super Bowl champions. But they still got work to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they, the Browns punched their ticket. The Browns are going. The Bills, like those, these last two games might be tricky. And I, I just I, I go to the logo thing like you do. And which one do you want to see? I'm, I'm thinking of that video that we all saw of the Michigan football team when they found out that they were playing <laughs> Alabama. And judge that what you will, it, it wasn't exactly a triumphant reaction. If you're sitting there and you're one of these division leaders, whoever, and like the Buffalo logo pops up, I don't think you're excited. The Browns won either for sure. To the golf analogy, Josh Allen is completely different than Joe Flacco. He's got like the simulator and the <laughs> state of the art, like that white headed driver, like super expensive clubs. He's on the range for three hours. He drives it 400 yards. I, it's probably Buffalo because Allen can just do more things that Flacco mm-hmm. can't do. It's really close though. And they may play in the playoffs. If, if Buffalo gets there, I think, it's, I think it's Buffalo just because the ceiling of their quarterback is higher. It's a great question, though. Mm-hmm. Really good. There are 